Union Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. Good morning, everyone, from Guardian Radio 96.9, Dwight Strong, along with Aaron Green this morning. And uh, we are interrupting regular programming, of course, because it is a big day. It is the opening of Parliament today in downtown Nassau. We're expecting the speech from the throne, from the new Governor General, Cynthia Pratt. And um, uh, so uh, that is going to cause a change in our programming for the next few hours, we anticipate. Um, but we are here. Um, Aaron, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Strawn. Good morning, Bahamas. Yeah, you, know, you know better than that. Call me Dwight, of course. Um, I, feel, and I feel, no, no, I feel so official. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right, well, well, it's a big day. I mean, uh, others are dressed it, to the T's in yeah. downtown Nassau for this big day. Um, uh, but we're all waiting to hear, waiting to hear what the government's agenda is going to be for the next few years in office, uh, for this mm-hmm. administration's next few years in office. And, um, uh, and we, we heard this morning um, some uh, uh, big news there about who will be the next uh, leader of government business in the House. Um, the Minister of National Security, Mr. Uh, Wayne Monroe. Wayne Monroe. Wayne mm-hmm. Monroe is the new leader of government business, replacing Obi Wilshkum, the late Obi Wilshkum, who passed away last week. Absolutely. This is one of the most important political events. I mean, it's a blend of politics and governance, but this speech from the throne, this is the formal manifesto, right? This is the formalization of the promises made in the, uh, in the campaign, mm-hmm. on the campaign trail in the blueprint for change. And it gives us an opportunity to assess the uh, capacity and the ability of the government to fulfill its promises. Right. Can they take promises to agendas, can they take agendas to policy, can they take policy to law and legislation? Yeah. Right? And that is going to be very interesting because we have a special report in today's Nassau Guardian looking at um, the last speech from the throne and some of the unfulfilled promises that were made. Cecil Neary is joining us as well. Good morning, sir. Great to have you with us. Let's get your mic up there. Um, uh, Yes, there we go. Mm -hmm. Um, Great to have you with us. our Tanika Thompson back with us and I'm um, writing about it this morning, looking at the promises that were left unfulfilled mm-hmm. from the government's 2021 agenda, um, which was wiped clean with the proroguing of, of, the, of Parliament. Right? Absolutely. So it, it, lots to pay attention to mm-hmm. in the speech from the throne. Will we see uh, items that were washed away with the proroguing, retabled? Will they be back, right. will they be back in the same state? Uh, will Will the government have taken the time to enhance or expand the legislation, right, the agenda in this time? Will we see new things? Right. Will it be a whole new direction? Absolutely. And, and what does that indicate, right? What does it indicate if things that were on the table no longer appear? Mm-hmm. And should we expect an explanation? Yeah. Right. And, 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 and will we get answers? Right. I'm not sure if I should expect an explanation in the speech from the throne, but I can get a good sense of what the government's rationale is Mm -hmm. from this presentation. I I love how you're trying to analyze the speech from the throne early, whereas I come from the aspect of pomp and pageantry. That's all that matters? I'm excited about that. I'm I'm excited to see um, Most Honorable, I think that's our new title now, Most Honorable Cynthia Pratt Mm -hmm. um, walk in her sitting down, the pump and pantry for that, mm-hmm. the excitement over that. Okay. And then the agenda of the speaking, the speech of the throne comes afterwards. Oh, That's okay. secondary to so me. Can, can, you, can you sleep better seeing the pump and pantry? Will that make you, make you full this, at night? This um, administration. What has, can that do for you? It, it gives me hope. It gives me hope to, to <laughs> appreciate and enjoy being bohemian. Oh, dear. right. Okay. Um, this administration has brought back um, um, pump and pageantry in terms of, of glitz and glamour and, and, and 
and parties, right? And this is a big thing for Bohemiana and Bohemians in general, where every other week there is some type of ceremony mm -hmm. happening. And this too would be something in, in the ceremonial books that yeah. behemoths will come forward to and say, hey, mm -hmm. I want to see um, a mother practice. Now, I don't doubt what you're saying. I believe that this is uh, what a lot of people will be looking at. Do you think more people will be talking about the clothes yes. that people see than what they hear today? Do and you then you think? later come on and uh, analyze the speech in the throne. But today is not that's for all the, about the, the analytics. Clothing. Today is for the pump and pantry. Oh, there, there's something special, though, I think, that will happen for ordinary behemoths. Mm -hmm. Right, regular Bahamians, uh, grassroots Bahamians, to see Cynthia Mother Pratt see? take the stage, take the throne, mm -hmm. right? To see her assume this position. Not just that, so close to the Trailblazer Awards, right? Where a number of prominent women who've made significant contributions, yes. like uh, Dr. Sandra Dean Patterson, the Honorable Glennis Hannah Martin, uh, Mar Marion Bethel. Those women will be honored. Uh, Zonta, several of the Zonta clubs of the Bahamas will be honored. Having Mother Pratt assume the throne at this time, I think, is a tremendous moment to watch, to be a part of for women and for grassroots Bahamians. And I think that would be a part of her speech, too, mm. um, highlighting women, highlighting the uh, mobility of women and the mobility of inner city people right. to the highest ranks of the Bahamas. And mm -hmm. I think that her speech will mostly concentrate on that and loosely generally on the agenda of mm -hmm. this administration. Well, I don't know about that. There's only so much of that you can put in there, but you're going to have to stick to the script, yeah. uh, you know, um, for the most part. For the most part, here. I hear you. But, but, but we'll see. We'll, well see. you know, it, it's interesting. We have a a figure who's obviously a part of politics, right? She's been involved in politics, but I wouldn't necessarily say she's a part of the political class. Mm -hmm. And it would be interesting to see how she treats this moment, right? That uh, a, a a regular down home, like Picewell Forbes, you you know, is referred to as a down home gal. Down home oh, sister, I assuming you all are going to be disappointed. Yeah, well, know, not we, much wiggle room. Right, no, right. We, we understand the room. protocol, but mm -hmm. it will be interesting to see how she adds her own personal yes. and and now professional flair, mm. right? As a politician who has done things differently um, amongst the political class, it'd be interesting to see how she takes the stage, how she takes the throne, how she handles the speech, which we know that she doesn't write herself, mm -hmm. right? And even the parts that she may put in, there's... The ownership of it. Right? To see how she treats it. And I think that is going to be a very interesting and telling moment. Mm -hmm. But I'll ask this uh, to Dwight. Did you receive an invitation to attend today? Because the invitations are out. Oh, they will be you know, they, invited? They, they tell you to dress up, oh, right? Okay. To, to come and listen to the speech of the throne. Um, so this is why I said Pump and Patry is part oh, of see. the glitz and the glamour of what's well, happening today. I'm, I'm, I'm like most Bahamians working working today. Yeah, you didn't get so any invitation. No, I don't have time for, yeah. for dress up on a Wednesday. But if you did get one invitation, mm. you would have dressed up, right? I truly doubt it. I have the show to do. You sure you're not what? dressed up? Because when I came in these F and M colors today, I didn't think I was going to see you in those you, PLP and colors. These today. are the colors of the flag of the Bahamas, signifying a national, non-political moment. I see. No it's one told quite, me today's dress up quite, day. Um, Aquamarine. You well, are it's, it's wearing a, the yellow, and um, and Aaron is wearing the red, mm -hmm. and then you left me out to just wear black. Well, I well, you know, I mean, who you represent there as well. But anyway, I just want to quickly read a bit of this article about what what we've seen in these past two years and what we have yet to see, right? Okay. Um, so again, this article uh, looking at the last speech on the throne. During the last session, uh, more than 100 pieces of legislation were passed, meeting some of the promises laid out in the 2021 speech from the throne, including a reduction in value-added tax, an increase in senior citizens' pensions, a rise in the minimum wage, and the abolishment of COVID uh, emergency orders, among other pledges, right? Now, let's just pause there. Mm -hmm. I refuse to accept the abolishing abolishment of COVID orders. Right, because that would have happened no matter what. Right, but, but because there is no legislation, there's no convention, right? There's no practice mm -hmm. that it would allow anybody to assume that that is a, a, a infinite yeah, thing. There wasn't, we, we all know that you have to end it. Right. 
It's it's not something so they that cannot you, tout that as but one they have of been our touted, uh, right? And well, it's that's in it's insanity. It's insanity. That was obviously going to go away. But anyway, you don't believe that, that, that we'll that be still locked down now. Pause, still locked down? When now, twenty twenty three, Mister. I mean, the well, of, oh one of the boy. things that I'm I'm looking for. Well, one of the things I am watching the speech for mm-hmm. is any indication that the government is prepared. So it's the, the right phrase, re-invoke the Pandemic Act, the Emergency Acts. What? Um, I, what? You're looking to see what? I'm, I'm watching to see if there's any indication that our government is prepared to put us back on lockdown. Why would they do that? Well, they would do it because there's a global movement, right? Like, I'm not thinking my government, the Bahamas government, is just going to start locking down Bahamians in isolation. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, I would like to, while I'm watching, I want to know what the government's position, their perspective is on future restrictions and lockdowns. Mm -hmm. We're entering the winter season. Mm -hmm. We're hearing from regions, jurisdictions throughout the world mm-hmm. that uh, they're concerned about rises in COVID yeah. numbers, right? Mm-hmm. And so I want to know in this speech, I want to get a sense it. of how prepared my I don't expect I, yeah, I don't think you'll hear is. the word COVID. Um, if unless they tout it as look what we did. Mm-hmm. That would be I can't imagine because that would just set off you know, I yeah. would I, I would prefer a government that is upfront and honest, which which shows me, proves to me that they're prepared. Mm-hmm. Right, they're prepared, and that's what mm. I'm looking for as well in this speech. That well. my government is prepared for not the things that we know may arise, mm. but for things that we are not sure of that may arise. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have. I, 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 I hear we should all. And as an, ad, as an adult, yeah. these are things. These are things that we should be looking for. These are things we should be expecting mm-hmm. from pronouncements, from proclamations. Of at this level from our government. Yeah, don't hold your breath. But I hear you, and mm-hmm. you should. You yeah, absolutely should. But yeah. I've also learned to manage my expectations. <laughs> that's that's wise. <laughs> that is wise. Now, six bills died on the House Assembly's floor due to the prorogation, right? Um, an amendment to the Child Protection Act, a bill to establish an independent body to manage the administration of the courts. A bill to repeal and replace the National Health Insurance Act to provide for a minimum standard health benefit. A bill to create the Office of the Ombudsman. This this poor thing is getting battered around. Yes. For, like this is tennis or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. A consumer protection bill. Hmm. That was going to be a good one. And a bill to create an act to regulate mineral prospecting and mining. Hopefully, many of those will come back. Um, Hopefully. Now, a key priority of the Davis administration after it uh, was swept into office in the landslide victory in September 2021 was to end the COVID emergency orders employed by MINIS, the MINIS administration, and replace them with legislation and policies to fully address future health risks. Right? So... uh, Well, we had legislation to address future health risks already. mm -hmm. Right? And so my concern is... And and that's why I want to know... I'm watching, right, to see if this pops up. Uh, We already had legislation to deal with it. And so what was the purpose of creating this new legislation? Mm -hmm. I I, I just don't see the claiming this is a massive success. It requires further interrogation, thoroughly. And I wonder where is the legal community? Mm. Where's the Bar Association? Where's the brotherhood and sisterhood of of lawyers, of, of, of jurists? Right, interrogating not just this particular issue, but everything that the government says. In fact, we the people would be better off if we could rely on our judicial community, on our jurists, to provide jurisprudence. Right, right. And we right? don't. We don't get that very and, often. And right? and that's a part of the cause why we have so much speculation. Yes. Why we have people throwing wild, uninformed opinions into the public domain. Absolutely, they should be able to rely on contributions from the legal community, inter- interpret, interrogate, help Bahamians, the layman, mm-hmm. to understand what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't so, know what we can do to encourage more of them to speak. We have a few who do, um, but most most are 
sitting back criticizing the public for lack for being ignorant, right. but not doing anything to educate. Yeah, which is very very interesting. So, which one of these bills do you think is urgent to bring back? I, I'm assuming that all will oh. be brought back. However, I, I'm thinking it's two years out. For before a general election, is it two, three, two, 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 and, two and a half? Two and a half, right? yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that they they they're starting over because they they couldn't meet their obligation. So I think that one or two of these may be scratched, or they have a number of uh, concepts that you want to bring to the fore that was not intended or mentioned on their first speech to the throne. Well, I would you. I I appreciate what you're saying. Absolutely. I think uh, the bill to create an act to regulate mineral and Mineral prospecting and mining is going to come back, right? That's an industry. It, it's happening. So they, they, they almost have like a, a, a statutory obligation to ensure that the laws on the books are aligned with the, and primarily the Constitution, but that they fit in just laws, right? And so I think that's going to come back. I think uh, a bill for um, a consumer protection bill is an absolute must, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, just the last week of stories, it, it, it spotlights or highlights the urgency mm-hmm. of this. Imagine um, you hearing statements from the airline, Flamingo Air, with the door that flew open, and none of the language suggests that these guys understand the urgency of the matter at hand. Mm-hmm. Oh, we reprimanded somebody. Oh, no, 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 no. We were as shocked as you to see the video. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, And even, I mean, as far as we could go, we could even go to the superintendant of uh, responsible for road traffic saying that we were just as shocked as y'all when we saw the law for the first time, which is arguably, what, three years? Turn on ready. Yeah, three years Mm -hmm. after it's passed. We have created a situation where Bahamians are left vulnerable, right, Mm -hmm. to a range of behaviors from technicians, experts, service people, service providers. You, you, we have incompetence, we have malfeasance and crookery, and then we get those who are just unserious. We, the public, rely on the state, state-endorsed mechanisms like unions, like guilds, like trade associations, to police the tradesmen within their industry, to protect the public, right? from shoddy work, from incompetent work, from crookedness. We've got uh, people who are patching holes that obviously don't know how to patch holes properly. We've got people hanging uh, utility lines, like electricity lines and, and utility services that don't even understand that there's a legally required height so that large commercial vehicles can pass through the roadways wow. safely, mm-hmm. right? And we are left subject to whatever these unscrupulous, and I want to use the word here, unserious. I want to make that note, unserious, right? I want to say thank you to Natino Thompson because there's a distinction between corrupt and incompetent, Mm -hmm. right? And then there is another group called unserious. And you all just keep sending unserious people out into the public. And we, the public, are at their mercy. Mm -hmm. Workmen who don't realize that you have a statutory obligation to provide a traffic management team when you're doing road works or obstructing the roadway, right? Road wor- wor- workmen that don't understand that you're supposed to put up a notice when you come in to cut trees, that you're supposed to appoint a notice of authorization to cut protected trees. We got workmen just dropping trees on people's <coughs> property, damaging infrastructure, and then they're gonna look at you and tell you, I wait for BPL, miss what you could do? I mean, you look at yesterday's tribunes, we have two articles highlighting a total lapse in duty uh, in terms of the uh, repealing an amendment of the Electricity Act Mm -hmm. and the provisions that uh, regulate the the flow of voltage uh, power. We got the the communication sector, Erka talking about the communication sector. We rely on the government to protect us by ensuring that there are regulations, oversight bodies that work constantly to assess what is happening. And I, and I hear all of that, but what I believe that will be included be something uh, along with uh, carbon credits. I'm sure they could be mentioned the environment again and our, and our obligation and our leadership in that and the touting that um, our Prime Minister is, lead, is a leader in that. All right, so we're going to st- uh, the speaker is uh, speaking in the House of Assembly okay. right now. Let's tune to that and um, and, and see the procedures uh, the proceedings get underway. 
Um, let's go to. We can talk Parliament. about the four billion credit bill, carbon bill in a second. Okay. As I move forward, Minister Wilchcombe was not only a valuable, a valued member of the Progressive Liberal Party, but also a cherished friend. His passing leaves a void that cannot be filled. Minister Wilchcombe was known for his impressive leadership and transformative work towards journalism in the Bahamas. He dedicated his life to public service and helped to revolutionize broadcasting in the Bahamas. Minister Wilchcombe was a statesman and a Bahamian ambassador at heart. His passion for advancing a modern Bahamas was well known during his many years as Minister of Tourism, where he championed the Bahamas internationally. As Minister of Social Services and Urban Development, he had a keen interest for the disabled and a desire to improve conditions in urban communities. His tenacity towards government business in this honorable chambers will surely be missed. Today, as I ascended this speaker's chair, it was one of the toughest walks I've ever had thus far in this parliament. No longer can I look to my immediate right and see the familiar face that always gave me his signature smiles, the presence of his calm spirit, and of course, that assuring nod that signals to me that everything was going to be okay. His legacy will live in history, remaining a symbolic icon for liberation and progression. As we mourn his loss, let us also celebrate the incredible person he was and the legacy he leaves behind. I take this opportunity to offer our collective sympathy and, condol and condolences to the Wilchcombe family, the constituency of West Grand Bahama and Bimini, members of the sustained parliament, those that love him, and the Commonwealth of the Bahamas during this difficult time. I would also like, on behalf of this House of Parliament, to, consent, to, to extend our sincerest condolences to our brother, our colleague, and friend, the Honorable Member for Carmichael, on the loss of his wife. To you, my brother, we are with you. We have our full support, and we wish you and your family well as you go through this time of bereavement. Honorable members, it is with great honor and enthusiasm that I address you representing the diverse voices and aspirations of our beloved Bahamas. We have convened under the proclamation from the Governor General summoning the Parliament to meet on the fourth day of October 2023. Momentarily, Her Excellency will open the Parliament with a speech from the throne, which will contain the legislative agenda of the government. During the last parliamentary session, the government pursued a very active and vigorous legislative agenda. Of note was the passage of the Parliamentary Service Act 2023. This was foreshadowed in the speech from the throne that opened the 2021 parliamentary session. The, the government also gave a clear indication of its intention to debate the court services bill by tabling it and placing it on the agenda in the last session. Unfortunately, this final piece of legislation, which is necessary to strengthen and complete 
the doctrine of the separation of powers as envisioned by the Constitution was unable to be completed. With the, with the prorogation of the Parliament, I suspect that the Court Services Bill will again be tabled in this parliamentary session. Honorable members, as we are reminded of the tremendous responsibility and privilege that comes with serving our nation, our democracy, a beacon of hope in the Caribbean, relies on the dedication, integrity, and commitment of those who fill these hallowed halls. The past two years has been a testament to our resilience as a nation. Through it all, you, our dedicated parliamentarians, have worked tirelessly to navigate these uncharted waters, striving for the betterment of our people and the progress of our nation. In the spirit of unity and cooperation, let us approach this new session with a renewed sense of purpose. Our citizens look to us for leadership, for policies that improve their lives, and for a vision for a brighter future. It is incumbent upon us to rise above partisan divides and work collaboratively. For the common good of our nation, in this age of technical advancement, I encourage you all to embrace the opportunities presented by science and digital innovations. We must harness these tools to make our legislative processes, processes more efficient and transparent. In line with our commitment to progress and excellence. Moreover, let us not forget our duty to uphold the principles of justice and the rule of law. We all can attest firsthand to the power of the law to bring about positive change. Let us remain vigilant in our oversight, ensuring that our laws and policies reflect, reflect the needs and values of our citizens, and that justice is accessible to all. Honorable members, in the coming days, weeks, and months, we will deliberate on matters of great importance, from health care and education to economic recovery and environmental sustainability. Let us approach these debates with open hearts and open minds, remembering that our decisions have a profound impact on the lives of those we serve. In closing, I want to express my unwavering belief in the potential of our nation and the dedication of our parliamentarians. Together, we can chart a course towards a brighter, more prosperous future for the Bahamas. Let this parliamentary session be a testament to our commitment to progress, unity, and the enduring spirit of our great nation. Thank you, and may your work here be guided by wisdom and compassion for the benefit of all Bahamians. Honorable members, I will now read the proclamation. Commonwealth of the Bahamas, by His Excellency, the Most Honorable Sir Cornelius A. Smith, Order of the Knight, Order of the Nation, Knight Grand Cross of the Most Distinguished Order of St. Michael and St. George, Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. The, pro the proclamation here reads, whereas the Parliament of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas stands prorogued from Saturday, the 12th day of August, 2023, and whereas Article 65.1 1 
of the Constitution provides that each session of Parliament shall be held at such place and commence at such, a, such, at such time as the Governor General may be proclamation appointed. Now, therefore, I, Cornelius A. Smith, Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, acting in accordance with the advice of the Prime Minister, do hereby proclaim that the next session of Parliament shall be held in the city of Nassau, in the island of New Providence, on Wednesday, the fourth day of October, 2023, and shall commence at 10 o'clock the, on the forenoon. Given under my hand and the public seal of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas at Government House in the city of Nassau, this 12th day of August, 2023, and the first year of His Majesty's reign, signed by the Governor General, God save the King. Here ends the proclamation. I will now appoint the following members to be a committee to wait on Her Excellency, the Governor General. The Honorable Member for Mount Moriah, the Honorable Member for Central Grand Bahama, and the Honorable, Mem the Honorable Member for Pine Ridge. You will have Advise Her Excellency that the House desires to know when Her Excellency will be pleased to receive members of the House of Assembly in the precincts of the Senate in Parliament Square. So, Mr. Nuri, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, we're in a short break. We're waiting for the House to reconvene, for them to move to the next step in the process. Uh, just a quick question. Was that enough pageantry for you? Um, I expect more, right? Uh, it's good to have the speaker read the proclamation. Uh, and good to have a narrative. I see she mentioned uh, Sir Cornelius uh, and his, uh, his reference. So, as we transition to the new governor general, it gives us some sense of what is happening regarding that. Right. I mean, it, it's important. These moments are important to know and understand what's happening, right? And and the process. This is this is the protocol. Um, protocol having protocol being established is important. Um, I'm really interested in the meat of the speech. I think most people are interested in the meat. Of and, the and, and 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 this is where where. I was debating with Dwight earlier regarding the meat and what is the meat. And, and obviously, hearing the speech and the promises and the mandate of this administration is important. I, mm. I, I give that. I accept that, right? But I also think the pageantry, the, the, the seeing our system at work is also important. And I believe that initially, the general public is watching to experience the pageantry and mm -hmm. experience the protocol. And this is the first thought. And after the first thought of all this happens, then there is an analytics of um, what was said. Right, absolutely. I, um, I think about the, the importance of that, that protocol, right? When I was young, we watched ZNS News, and my mother always let me know, you know, when we were growing up and when we were becoming... Uh, parents, people watch the news and then they would write 
ZNS. They would write the Broadcasting Corporation indicating all of the errors that were made in the broadcast. And I wonder, do we have a, like an independent body that monitors these official sessions to ensure that they are following the proper protocol, that things are being done the proper way. And if protocol shifts, right, if the way that we do things shift, that that shift is being properly documented, right? That, yes. that we understand what we started with, what the original form is, and that we understand what the changes are that have been made and why they've been made, right? To, to maintain, to preserve the integrity of the process. And this is where experienced politicians and, and protocol officers come in, right? To educate the public on, please expect this. Yes. This is the reason why these things happen. If you, if you look over yonder there, the, the coloring of the background is this lime green for a reason. Right. And this is reflected from at the UK and it started from here and this is a tradition. So all of the Bohemian people can appreciate what is happening. Absolutely. We're about to return back to the house um, and we'll see you guys on the next break. And I'll also invite, I'll also invite um, Madam Speaker that the, the nameplate for the constituency be draped in black until that vacancy is filled. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair would like to extend congratulations to the Honorable Member of Freetown as you know. Let me say you have big shoes to fill. Big shoes to fill. I took my cue from West Grand Bahama and my co-pilot over here, so now you become my new co-pilot. <laughs> Thank you, Honorable Member. I would also like to congratulate the Honorable Member for Golden Gates. It's good to see, Honorable Member, a woman is in the mix of the leadership of government business in this esteemed halls. All right. Um... So the Senate has left the yes. building, right? So we start the procedures. I see that the Prime Minister made a motion to drape the member of the parliament plaque for Go ahead. the plaque for uh west end and bimini the seat that uh the departed obi wilchkin would have held and they said they're going to cover drape that in black and he mentioned the time period he said until it's been um the seat has again. been filled the seat has been filled again yes which makes me wonder do you think we're going to hear anything about that will there be a tribute to mr wilchkin in the speech uh, will there be an indication of the way forward with the by-election? I, I think right now you'll see a number of persons uh, stand and give tribute to the, um, the Member of Parliament at this present time. Um, I also take notice that the Prime Minister mentioned who's going to uh, replace or assume the responsibility of, what, that's the Leader of the House? Uh, the, what do you call leader that of Government business, business in the House of yes. Assembly. And just say the name for people who wasn't listening at this So program. the Minister of National Security, Mr. Wayne Monroe, will now assume the position of Leader of Government Business in the House of Assembly. Yes. And it seems a fitting uh, appointment, uh, uh, just in terms of style and, 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 and charisma. It seems that um, Mr. Monroe will assume that, that responsibility easily and carry on the mandate of the government business. Something to be debated at a later time. <laughs> you could debate that at a later time. We, we debate that at a later time. I expect that um, he's going to be a force to reckon with and keep um, everyone in order in terms of focus on what is the government's agenda. But I wonder if his, if his style of communication uh, will be f a fit in the House. Um, I am not necessarily appreciative of his tone when he's speaking to the general public, and I wonder if his colleagues will accept that tone or whether he will shift his tone in the house i don't think mr monroe can shift his tone his tone is what he is like i say something to be debated perhaps at a, a later date yes and and I'm, I'm sure there will be more commentary when the whole process has started and uh, and the Bohemian public is able to experience and watch his style and his tune, like you mentioned, and then compare it and contrast it to the former 
uh, Obi Wan Scrimmon, his style. But remember that Obi was very forceful also and say, hey, stay focused. This is the government's agenda and this is what we're talking about. I remember they had an exchange with the leader of the opposition, um, leader of the opposition, Pintard, Pintard uh, some time ago when Pintard said that he has a right to speak and uh, Obi will just remind him, so this is the government's agenda. We are speaking on this. And there is a little bit of a back and forth. So it should mm. be interesting to see if such come up again. How would um, a Monroe deal with such? Absolutely. And I'm not, I'm not questioning Monroe's legal acumen, right, and his ability to interpret and understand uh, the operation of parliamentary rules in the House uh, at all, right? And I think he is a good fit in that sense. He's very quick mind and can very, very easily assess, right, the application of the rule or the principle in the moment. And I think he's a great fit for that. Um, and one must also appreciate why Obi Wilshkin was chosen. He was uh, more adept, most experienced than a number of the politician, most seasoned politician to understand the rules, regulation, what is expected, right. uh, what is the agenda, and stay focused on that. Um, this is uh, Mr. Monroe's first term as a member of parliament. Yes. And um, even though he's a student law, and I'm sure he studied the procedures and everything, um, this says, it says wonders of having that, that on-hand experience. So it should be interesting to see how that come up, comes about. Absolutely. I will say this, Mr. Neuer. I think the next time we do this, would be hopefully in another two and a half years, we invite protocol officers, those who are not busy attending, uh, or retired protocol officers that would have had experience organizing and, and, and managing these events uh, to come and join us so that we get a sense of what to expect as we walk through the, 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 this morning's event um, and, and to give an indication of something new is happening, right? One of the things we get to see in the speech from the throne is this administration's governance style, right? Yes. And that will be reflected in how this event unfolds as well as the content of the speech. I think the Bahamian people are eager to know how, eager to know about their system, the system of governance, mm -hmm. eager to know how each administration manages that system of governance. And this is where a number of people have been eager and asking and demanding that they understand the protocol, that they can comment on a protocol when the, either the protocol is doing well mm -hmm. or it falters, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where we're lacking. So I, I embrace the idea that perhaps in the future that uh, we invite um, such persons to come online and, and, and then explain to us why such things happen. Right. One of the things for me that's fascinating is the question of who is in charge in this moment, right? Who is in charge? Is it the governor general who constitutionally is the head, right, mm -hmm. of, of the country? Is it the uh, prime minister who, who essentially appoints the governor general or is it the speaker of the house, right? Uh, does the speaker of the house not gain control until the house is officially opened? And what role does the speaker play, right, in today's uh, event? Yeah, and but like I said, I, I am excited. I am. This is why I concentrated firstly on the pump and pageantry, right? But there's clearly a need to explain, educate the Bohemian pu public as to what to expect, mm -hmm. right? And then to educate us on the role of each person, so we can appreciate, and then to um, challenge our, our government to. Um, uh, commend our government when they're doing a good job. And um, moving forward, I'm hoping that whoever, whatever administration is at, at, ahead or the whole governance in general, the whole old gamut of it, um, take advantage and say, hey, the Bohemian public is interested in this. Mm -hmm. The Bohemian people want to be a part of the system. And this will be how we're going to do it, by having a program we educate this, uh, educate the masses on, on each section. Let's take it a step further. The Bahamian people have a constitutional duty to inform themselves and to, to keep abreast and to understand. And the, I hear you, you know, Aaron, but what if what I'm learning on my own is wrong because it's well, something of interpretation. I would, I would you, and it leads further to your point, right? One, what came up for me was that surely by now we have an association of retired civil servants whose uh, primary function, of course, is to support each other, right? Because you're retired, but secondarily to support the government and the general public in understanding how government works and how parliament functions based on their experience, right? 
Uh, they should be writing pamphlets, they should be having talks, they should be running seminars, particularly for younger, newer civil servants or members of the public service. Um, and this would be a helpful tool to support both the general public and the, the, the government and the public service, right? This is, would be a benefit to all elements of governance, the government, the opposition, civil society, the general public. Yes. Um, and this is, I would also like to know the role of the opposition. Mm -hmm. How do they play? You know, what do they play in this pump and pageantry? Right. Do they have right an now? official function? Yes. Is there a point in the program where they are supposed to speak? Yes. Do they stand and raise and say, we're well, we going to speak on this point? Right. But listen, there, there are a lot of things I'm also excited about, right? I want to know, will we hear, we, we've heard the announcement of the new lead of government business in the house. Mm -hmm. Will we hear any names for replacement of for the candidate for the by election? I think it's too early for this. And and I met, I remember the the chairman of the Progressive Liberal Party, uh, Fred Mitchell, mentioned that they're 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 in mourning mode. Right? There's no politics yeah, involved at this present. Yeah, that's fine. We're not talking about politics, we're talking about governance. Mm -hmm. And governance never sleeps, right? Um, the House of Parliament went on vacation, but cabinet kept functioning. Mm -hmm. And while we, 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 we show respect for Mr. Wilchcombe's passing, we show respect for those in the PLP, in his community, in his family, who are bereaved, who are grieving. We show respect for that and we hold a space for that. We cannot stop governance for the sake of a political party's feelings. We have, to, we have to push forth. I'm also very troubled by the suggestion that the FNM will not run a candidate in that seat. It's not about politics, gentlemen. It's about governance. Um, governance and politics sometimes go hand in hand, or, or they, they one in Sometimes the they hand, hold hands. Oh, and sometimes they're in e each other's shadow. But I, I think what you're saying, right? Um, what they're saying, what what they're saying uh, is that perhaps it's just too early to have uh, mm -hmm. some commentary on, on that as yet. Absolutely, and and I I, I give that grace, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and perhaps even if I expect it, even if the Constitution warrants it, we understand that uh, we are human. We are human. We are fallible, and and we must move holding each other. So currently, right now, the speaker is naming members for various House committees as they await the arrival of the Governor General. Good. Uh, I, I know there was circulating that there's a, a, a number of positions going to be filled, and I was trying to see if I get an update on it and scanning my, my, my notes. But um, as soon as I get that, I can... Because um, I, also, I noticed that um, earlier, it was mentioned that a peer, Glover, I forget her new last name, forgive me. Roll. Roll, forgive me. Um, got a position too uh, as new governess, and I'm trying to find that so I can... Right, so she's now the deputy leader of okay, business of government business in the House of Assembly. Good. So that's, um, yes, I've seen it now. So the Honorable Wayne Monroe to be appointed as leader of the government business. And then, of course, Pia Glover role. Wayne Monroe and Pia Glover role be his assistant or deputy. Absolutely. Okay. Right, and I think that... that I'm okay with that decision as well, right? Pia Glover, working in the ministry responsible for the public service, I think has, has manifested a profound understanding of how the public service works, right? Which gives her, or it suggests that she has the capacity to quickly understand how parliament works and what her function as, as de facto leader, right? And as deputy leader would be. Um, and if she had to step into the role of leadership in case Mr. Monroe is unavailable, right? And yes. so there's a degree of confidence I have with that selection as well. And remember earlier we were talking about protocol and how the implications of what is happening now. And I want to read this. Uh, this office of the judiciary uh, had a public notice because of the opening of the House today. So the public is hereby notified that due to the opening of Parliament Wednesday, the 4th of October, 2023, hearings in the Supreme Court and the Magistrate Courts shall be suspended until 2.30 p.m. All first pleads in the Magistrate Court shall be conducted in the Magistrate Court number 5, commencing at 9.30 a.m. 
all other court services shall operate during normal working hours. And that's from the registrar who is Constant, Mrs. Constant Delaney. So I just want to mention that uh, there's other implications of having an opening in the house and there are a right. number of departments, agencies that it has impacted today. Right, it will sort of be suspended because their officers are required to be at the opening of the House of Parliament. Another important notice for people who are listening in their cars and wondering why is there so much traffic on the north side of uh, town to say it's because of the opening of the house. They're in, Rosson, they're in Parliament Square, Mr. Nury. Mm -hmm. um, and so... There's been road di uh, road closures, there've been traffic diversions, and so we advise um, motorists to travel south of Shirley Street. If you have to make your way from the east to the west, the west to the east, avoid Bay Street, avoid Shirley Street. You may, you may experience backups in traffic, and there may be no notice. You may not know why you're sitting in traffic, but it's due to the opening of the House of Assembly today in Parliament Square um, in, in the middle of town. And of, of course, the police has experience in diverting traffic. So I, yeah. I, once the public is aware that <laughs> there will be a delay and that you should avoid that area, I'm and, sure there shouldn't be. And I will traffic. say this, the, the police had issued the notice um, days ago. Yes. Right? I just haven't seen, I haven't seen any public notices posted on the roadways mm. to indicate to people what is it what it is they may be experiencing mm -hmm. with a traffic backlog. And I think that's we talk about protocol being established, right? Let's make sure that we go all the way down the list of things that have to be done, that are supposed to be done for this event. And it also includes ensuring that the motoring public and those people who use public transportation, because the bus route typically goes through town, what um, what's been done to ensure that those people understand how their routes have been changed for the day. Mm -hmm. Do we just rely on bus drivers to say to everybody who come on the bus yesterday, now remember town could be closed, so this way we're picking up? Or do we post notices, right? And that's why this consumer protection bill, I'm, I'm hopeful that it comes back up as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, earlier, I'm not sure if the speaker come back as yet, but earlier um, you mentioned that um, you were concerned about the, the talks about not the candidate parties not running a candidate yes. for the West End, right? But I'll take this time to read a parliamentary registration department notice, right? Yes, yes. The parliamentary registration department wishes to advise the general public that, that due to the upcoming by-election in the West Grand Bahama and Bimini constituency, voter registration centers will be open in Eight Mile Rock, West End, and Bimini administrators offices beginning on October 2nd. That was Monday, yes. right? October 2nd, 23. At the following times to allow first time registration of, of voters and transfer of affected voters, Monday through Friday. So this exercise is gonna be done Monday through Friday. Uh, it's gonna be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., 5 p.m to 9 p.m., so two times there. It's going to be 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., then it's a one-hour break, and then there's 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Then on Saturdays, it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., and on Sundays, it's going to be, even Sunday, it's mm -hmm. going to be from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Additional sites will be announced shortly. Please note that the persons living in the West Grand Bahama and Bimini constituency who are registered to vote and who are in possession of the current voter's card purple, do not have to register again. I repeat that. Those persons in possession of the current um, voter's card, which is the purple uh, voter's card, do not have to register again. If you are a registered voter and have moved into the West Grand Bahama and Bimini constituency and have resided there for more than three months, you are eligible uh, to transfer uh, to vote in that constituency. And that's signed by the parliamentary commissioner. And, and I think this too should be an educational process for Bahamians in mm -hmm. terms of what to do if there's a by-election. Right. And by-elections can happen t for any reason, right? Yeah, right. And, and, and we as a, as a public, as a community, need to understand the system. So well, whenever there's a by-election, I expect this to happen, mm -hmm. right? And I expect... Um, I should be reacted or this or these are my responsibilities. So I'm hoping that the powers that be take advantage of these opportunities to educate 
the entire Bahamas, um, especially Family Islanders, you know, uh, mm-hmm. um, who tends to be forgotten uh, in general or in- not included in the, in the psyche or the narrative of, of governance. Right, for some strange reason. Right. right. I, I was about to suggest to you that maybe it, it would be worth it for us to do a government notice day, right? Where we just read government notices, right? And discuss the implications of the notice, who the notice is for, right? What is required of the people that the notice is for. Um, because a lot of information does not reach the entire, uh, does not reach the breadth and scope of the archipelago, right? The archipelagic exterior. And it's very important. Not only do we demand equal and equitable access to services, right? We also acknowledge that we have an equal and sort of equitable obligation to participate in governance, but we can only do that if we are informed participants. I, um, and before we reconnect, to the live remote, right, about the opening of the House Assembly, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we need to have a discussion on when is it too early to start talking politics? Is it too early to start talking politics regarding West End and Bimini by election? Is there a period of mourning? I know a number of flags are at half mast, and I put it that way a number of flags are at half mast, but not all. If you go around the roundabouts, none of the flags are at half mast. Mm-hmm. If you go to a number of government um, offices, none of a few of them mm-hmm. are at half mast. Who is responsible uh, in for, flags. for flags or for ex- explaining the protocol to, especially at government offices? I'm not even even thinking about private entities, you know. But even but the the. Re- Regulation is also for private entities. I, mean, I know. For anybody but flying a flag. I, I, and flying the Bahamian flag. So I'm not even sure yeah, if, right. you, if you can half mass a different uh, country flag. But, but uh, the, the education process of which flags to be at half mast, right? Mm-hmm. And when to put the flag at half mast. Who makes the proclamation that, that, that the flag on half mast? And uh, who is responsible for daily bringing down the flag and putting it at half mast? Right, mm-hmm. and uh, like I said, I, I've I, I'm even not even gonna call the, the 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 three government agencies I drove past that didn't have it, right? But I notice that it's it obvious uh, that they didn't have um, the flag at half mast. Right, but surely every ministry has a protocol officer, and that protocol officer should to attend should attend to any structure or building that that ministry's business takes place in to ensure that proper protocol is being established. Um, Not just flags in terms of uh, disability access, right, and mobility access. Every entity should have a protocol officer ensuring that every day protocol is being followed. Mm. And if not have a protocol officer, then the permanent secretary who manages the offices right. should definitely send out the memo and instruction as this is what we are doing as a unit, as an institution. And we, we all be following suit. Uh, and and uh, I'm sure the public roads and public parks have that instruction or, or person uh, who's in charge also to mm-hmm. notify them, hey, at all around about where it has flags, please go and put them at half mass. Right, without a doubt. I wonder if uh, the Defense Force is asked to assist in this, right, to ensure that uh, all official government agencies, corporations, uniform forces, all of their buildings are following proper protocol. I'm not even going to mention that where I saw the flag at full mass, defense officers are stationed. I'm going to leave that alone and just bypass that fact. But yes, I noticed that they were still... (laughs) Full mass and not at half mass at this present time. Uh, and is there a, a, a country in the morning? Are we that at that point? And how long does it last? Does it last from beginning of the proclamation mm-hmm. or the day? Or, and does it last until the funeral? Uh, and how long? Like I said, right. uh, someone should be supposed to be informing all of the behemoths. So we, a person, people like me who are at home, who have a flag, mm-hmm. I know the proper protocol on what to do. And, and since we've, I'm wearing my red and blue today, um, what role does the uh, official opposition, yes. what role does the official opposition play in the recognition, in the passing of Mr. Wilshkum, 
the acknowledgement and commemoration of the passing of a sitting member of parliament, right? And how do we take these things out of the political space and entrench them where they should be, which is the national governance space, right? Um, same thing with majority uh, day, national holiday. How do we make that a national event as opposed to just a political convention, right? And I think that requires the official participation of whoever the opposition is, right? Whether it's the opposition in government of the day or the opposition when the event occurred, how do we shift from the political to governance? Yes, and, and this is where I, I, I mentioned, and I'm glad that you keep on harping on it, that um, I confess I do not know, right? Um, say, God forbid, say, I mean, say it was the reverse, that a person was not a part of the government administration, but was on the opposite opposition side, right. but still a sitting member of parliament. Is the protocol the same, identically the same? Mm -hmm. Does the governing administration take over the or the official uh, organization organizing of the protocols, or does the opposition say, "Well, since it's one of this, is my guy, mm -hmm. we will do all of the the protocol and and and." the organization of what's happening. Right, and th does the House of Assembly make a distinction in stature in that way, right? Like, all MPs are MPs, right? And, and I, I, I reference the uh, parliamentary, I, it's a rule, a principle, but at, at any point in time, the majority of members of the House can indicate to the Governor General that they've lost confidence in the person who's been appointed Prime Minister. Right, and so what is the difference in recognition of the death of a member of the administration versus a member of the royal opposition? And we both come to it, Ms. Nure. Most of my shows I do, I like to approach it like I'm a senior in high school, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't know nothing, and I have to go out into the into Bahamiana and find out, right, these things. And many of us are in the same position where we're not quite certain what the protocol is, uh, but we are now certain that we're returning back to the House of Assembly. Thank you guys for staying tuned. We'll be, we're there. Okay, all oh, right, so we, we, we're on our way there. We're not quite there yet. Uh, my uh, production manager reminded me that technically they are in Rawson Square, and I, what I want to ask is like this protocol question. Does Rawson Square be, and Parliament Square, do those spaces become the House of Assembly, right? Like, I think that came out regarding the government in the sunshine. Remember that that was a theme? Oh, we are the government in the sunshine, it, and they brought people out into Rawson Square. I think that was a thing. And the Senate. Well, my, my question is, it's like uh, with embassies, wherever an embassy is located in a foreign jurisdiction, that land becomes the land of that, for, right? of that jurisdiction. So U.S. embassy, when you step on there, you're on U.S. soil. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, like wherever the procedures of the House of Assembly take place, is that then demarked, right, mm -hmm. as the same space, but we're just doing it outside? Um, one thing I see that we... we have not harped on or, or concentrated on is the role of the Senate in opening the House. Yes. Right? We know that it's, at the beginning, it started as a joint session. Right. Right? And that at one part, they, the Senate left to go and have their own proceedings, their own um, ceremonies Ceremony, yes. in, in the Senate. Right? And um, I'm hoping in the future there is a, a, an educational process for, again, the Bohemian public as to why, when, which when to expect, and then the, the pump and pattern tree ceremony of, of um, coming in, leaving, all of that, so we can appreciate it better. Right, right? and I think when you, under, when you see the protocol and understand it, then you also understand why some of us continuously proclaim that the Senate is maintained for senior statesmen and stateswomen, for senior politicians, people who have experienced governance, 
people who understand why policies were created and why they evolved the way that they did into law, why law was amended, why law evolved the way that it did to this present point. Those people who are appointed to the Senate have a wealth of knowledge that can only be gained through experience as leaders, whether social leaders, religious leaders, or political leaders, right? And the Senate is a very uh, important and sacred place, and it should not be used for political favors, but it should be maintained for the most senior and experienced statesmen and stateswomen. But is that happening, Aaron? Of course I, it's not happening. Because I, I, I thought the Senate is used as a training ground for, as uh, the opposite, to reward persons who did not, who... Uh, who vied to be a member of parliament, but did not make it, and so I need a, I need to reward you, acknowledge your and and, and let me effort. make a distinction between those two points: a a training ground, and b a reward. And neither are appropriate, right? Neither are appropriate for that role, right? It's the the people appointed to the Senate are people who should have no fear in challenging those in the House of Assembly. They should have no fear in sending a bill back to the House of Assembly with a note that says, we were here the last time we, this was tried, and we've attached all of the notes that we've gathered from the decades of trying to work this idea out. That's what the Senate is reserved for, and I think we would have a better understanding of that if we saw protocol in action and we understood the, 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 the construction of parliament, the operation of parliament, and the participation or the function of each element in an event like today. Um, I'm smiling because recently we have bragged um, that we have the youngest uh, senator ever in the Senate House. Yes. Right? And then you saying that it's supposed to be seasoned up, uh, seasoned members of, of society, yes. and that, that the Senate is a sacred and a and, special and a place. And a particular point, people... That seems who, to be contrary to what is happening. People who are not afraid or concerned about the backlash of challenging mm -hmm. a member of the House of Assembly on a matter of governance, on a matter of policy, on a matter of legislation. The Senate is supposed to be for the fearless, mm -hmm. not for the... Uh, so right, endeared. I love how you use that word, right? Not for the endeared, even though there's definitely uh, partisan politics in the Senate where they, they are combative based on the agenda of their political leaning. leaning yeah, absolutely. Right? And I see that um, you mentioned that since it should be the upper house, it is the upper house, yes. right? And the beaten laws that will impact all behemoths, that the primary agenda is supposed to be for the betterment of the Bahamas and not necessarily for the betterment of their political party or for their political agenda. Or the political party that appointed them in the sense, in case of independent senators, right? Um, we, in the case of, I think, was it Henfield? Was Henfield appointed by an opposition? Um, Henfield is an opposition. What I'm saying was, but was oh, you point? mean uh, the Renard Henfield, not Henfield? Right. There, not, not Renard. Henfield. Okay, go ahead. Right. Uh, he was. A, I think he was appointed as a, in, an independent. That's. I think that's the in impression. theory. But remember, uh, Fred Mitchell was appointed as a FNM senator years ago. Yes. Right. But he was not a part of the FNM party. Right, because there's a seat. There's a seat maintained f for independents. Right? I think there's a seat maintained for people who are not an official member of the party. Mind you, you're appointed by, uh, you're appointed by the governing party and approved by the opposition, right? How these things go. But those spaces are supposed to be used to prove, right? To, to prove that you can engage in a nonpartisan way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm seeing that um, I'm getting texts that there is some type of chanting in the background in Parliament Square, Rosson Square. Um, they're not sure exactly why there is some kind of chanting, if there is a protest or or something going on. But um, as we get an update on that, we'll give commentary. Uh, it is open in the House. Is there a need or is there space for protest at this present time? Right. We know we have a number of alternative parties who play 
pegged themselves as being a a, a um, what do you call that type of party? Um, lost for words. Where where they uh, activists? That's what it is. Activist type parties where they take advantage of any opportunity to bring a singular point out by true protesting. I got you. I, I feel you. There's always space for protest, Mr. Nuri. That that's when we. We, when we move away from uh, free speech and free thought, and, and, and I don't even necessarily want to use the word democracy because that's, that's, that doesn't encapsulate fully what it is I'm thinking about. But um, we can say in a democracy, there is always room for protest, right? We don't shut down protests, but we um, not just encourage, but we demand that those that are protesting, right, operate with integrity and ensure that their protest does not become harmful or violent, does not result in injury, right? That they are mature, that they're respectful, that they're measured, right? And that they're responsible. But surely, protest if you want to protest. And, and knowing you as being an advocate and an activist, right? You can appreciate protest, but I am conservative in thinking that there's a time and place for everything. Right. And, 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 so and today ain't no time to be no protest. It's over to the house. I mean, you know, in, to go through the procedures. Today in the Bahamas, I imagine there are two sets of people. Mm -hmm. Those who believe that this is the right time and place for protest and those who believe that this isn't the right time and place for protest. Mm -hmm. Right? And, I, and like you say, it's a, conserv it's a conservative view, but it's also important to recognize that this is about governance. Right? It's not about politics. It's not about what's best for your party. It's not about what puts your party in the best light. It's not about preventing any activity that embarrasses your party. This is about ensuring the proper function of governance. And on a day like today, to, pr to suggest that people cannot protest is anti-democratic. Hmm. So you the support. I don't know what, what anyone would protest it because it's the begin, beginning of the whole system again. Right? Are they protesting the system, or are they protesting the idea that the it, it was dissolved, houses dissolved earlier in the middle of their uh, agenda? But I guess we would have to wait and, uh, and see what the news forecasters come and, and say on the reason why. And a, a savvy protester would wait until they hear the speech from the throne, and then protest what was said or what wasn't said. Or what wasn't so, said. for instance, I too am concerned that we haven't been given a rationale for why the House was expected to was reconvene on the 16th of August, but there was a surprise, and I will use the word surprise proroguing because the notice was issued by the Provost Marshal, by the police force, on the Saturday morning, and the proroguing took place that same Saturday, later in the day, right? And so I would want a rationale for why this sudden proroguing of the House I expect to hear that. I expect to be able to glean from the speech from the throne or to infer from what's said why they paroled, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would measure my protests. As a savvy advocate or strategist, I would wait until I've heard the speech from the throne, assess it like in today's Guardian article, assess it with the form of speech from the throne and what happened over the last two and a half years, and then I would strategize my protest. Well, I expect um, for, for the, in the days to come, there'll be a, lot of, a number of analytics as to what was said mm -hmm. or what was not said, right? And then the question as to what should have been said and, and are we lacking? I'm, ass right. I'm assuming that the opposition already have crafted a prepared response, no matter what is said <laughs> today. Right. A prepared response is going to be crafted, and then you have bits and pieces where you can add in and, uh, and tweak and amend. Right. If, for instance, I w if I were wanting to protest the political class, both parties, the government, the, 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 the system of governance, I would, first of all, I would be at this event. My numbers, we'd all be in uniform, right? We all look the same. Because protest in this, at this particular event isn't only for the political class, right? It's not only for the government. It's also, a, it's also for the people, right? It is a perfect opportunity to show the people that you are also a part of governance through your presence. You also show those, the, the people in government that you're there. Mm -hmm. We're here. We're participating. 
we're listening and we're prepared to hold your feet to the fire. Mm. Right? And so that's like the first step of the protest. I would come out and just let everybody know we're here. We are active participants in governance. Right? Listen to the speech from the throne, mm -hmm. make these assessments, and then I would come up with a strategy post that point. And I know we have yet to comment, and I, and I try not to be preemptive in terms of comment, which we would like to, to be in the speech for, of, of the throne. Mm -hmm. I expect this, this speech of the throne should mention marijuana in terms of the regulating cannabis bill, the cannabis bill. Creating an industry. Yes. Yes, yes, and who would be involved or, or which this administration planned to do with that. I expect that to be... To and be I, I want a clear and definitive an enunciation of who can consume, who can participate. Just, just cl demystify it. Clarify it right now. What is the industry you're creating? What are the bounds of the industry? Because there's just too much... There's too little clarity, too much uncertainty in the minds of the public. And um, another thing I, I think should, or I expect, let's say this, what I expect to be included within the speech of the throne would be carbon credits, right? I, I think that um, this blue carbon credits narrative... Uh, and uh, gray carbon credits, which but haven't... They haven't even spoken it. We, I forget I mean, what happened to the ambassador... Ambassador Rick, Rick Fox. Rick Fox and the Partana deal. Yeah, that, that, that just just dropped off the radar for a bit. But I, I think that um, there should be a narrative of where we are in, in orchestrating this blue carbon credit um, and how we're going to benefit from it. Uh, I think there is going to be, I would expect there will be some mention of it inside the speech, from the speech of the truth. And I, I expect that there will be mention of uh, climate financing and our work climate change obligations. Yesterday's paper had this wild st story. We're back, guys. We're back at the, uh, in Rawson Square, Parliament Square, for the opening of the House and the Speech for the Throne. President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, as this is the first occasion upon which I am presenting my government's agenda in this assembly, I pray God's special guidance and blessings upon us all as we go about the business of the people of the Bahamas. We gather during a period of mourning and therefore note with great sadness the untimely demise of one of the senior members of the cabinet, the Honorable Obadiah Hercules Wilchka, Member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama, and Bimini. My government has treasured his counsel and advice in contributing to the good management of the public affairs of our nation, both as Minister of Social Services and Urban Renewal, laterally as Minister of Social Services, Information and Broadcasting and as a leader of business and government's business in the assembly. We offer our deepest condolences to his family, friends, colleagues, constituents, and loved ones. May he rest in peace. Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, 
My government came into office just over two years ago. At the time, the country faced many urgent crises. The national debt had skyrocketed, with the economy battered by a series of lockdowns and curfews. We had the worst unemployment crisis in our modern history. Our hospitals were overflowing with some patients receiving treatment in corridors and parking lots. Our schools were closed with no plans in sight to repair and to reopen them. Thousands of children were unable to participate in remote learning. And large numbers of people were traumatized from the passing of Hurricane Dorian and the experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. On coming to office, my government set out a five-year program and committed to work in partnership with other nations, with our local communities, and most importantly, with Bahamian people to address the challenges that these crises posed. Now, 24 months later, less than halfway through the term, my government has already successfully implemented a significant number of policies, many of which are combined in my government's blueprint for change. The priority was to focus on policies which would rescue, recover, and begin to rebuild our economy. My government's most recent budget communication, a budget for security and progress, strongly attests to the success of my government's priorities and choices. Real GDP growth in 2022 was recorded at 14.4%, and GDP in nominal terms grew by 11.9%. A host of other key economic indicators confirmed that the public finances are being managed competently and well, that the economy had rebounded strongly, and that the country is now back on the right track. My government made a number of commitments for this fiscal year, focused on three pillars of national development. Personal security, economic security, and national security. Soon after the passing of the budget, the Bahamian people came together in July 2023 to celebrate 50 years of independence under the theme, One Nation, Our Legacy, Our Future. Madam President and the Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker, and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, the achievements of my government in alleviating the hardship of the Bahamian people and the many crises it inherited have since been tempered by unforeseen global factors. The Russian invasion of Ukraine had been a driver of higher oil prices. The invasion and disruption from economic lockdown during the COVID-19 pandemic 
caused the enormous challenges in the global supply chain. While the economic chaos and hardships have hit virtually every country. The result is that things are still too tough for far too many people, especially the poor amongst us. Mindful of the estimated 2,000 verses in scripture, that deal with issues of the poor and committed to the ideals underpinning the genesis of its political foundation. My government retains a strong focus on helping to alleviate the misery of poverty. Our commitment is unwavering. Though it may be difficult, and though it may take some time, we shall not fail or falter. We shall not weaken or tire as we seek to wipe every tear from every eye. My government's blueprint for change is the platform upon which it was elected. It is the mandate upon which it governs, and as such, we are resolved to deliver the programs it outlines for the short, medium, and long term. The priorities of this legislative agenda do not preclude anything in the blueprint. And so, the program outlined today highlights a number of specific legislative measures. Others will be introduced as needed and when required. In preparation for this new phase of our legislative agenda, my government has already announced changes in various cabinet portfolios, which include the creation of new ministries. In light of the recent and the sudden passing of Minister Wilshcombe, further changes will have to be made. Other changes in public service appointments are already underway. These changes will further support my government as it continues to build on progress made and drive new change in the country. In this next phase of the administration, my government will continue to intensify its focus on strengthening personal security economic security, and national security. Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, in continuing to intensify its focus on promoting personal security, my government's legislative agenda moves decisively to boast the number, type, and quality of jobs available to Bahamians. It wants to take an holistic approach to improving educational outcomes for all. We want to support the development of our young people and promote better health and wellness among the general population. My government firmly believes that the main path to greater personal security is through work and education. 
while the country currently enjoys one of the lowest levels of unemployment experienced in a long time. As yet, not everyone who wants a job has a job. And those who choose to start their own business and work for themselves still face too many obstacles. My government will actively enforce its policy of promoting and protecting jobs for Bahamians. As the father of the nation, former Prime Minister Salindin Pinning put it, my government will prioritize Bahamian jobs for Bahamian workers. A new unit will be formed to review notice of vacancy processes to ensure that Bahamians have a fair opportunity to apply for all available jobs that are created as our economy grows and diversifies. Tourism remains our number one industry and the largest source of employment. My government will continue to advance measures not only to expand jobs and opportunities in the sector, but also to promote greater economic ownership for Bahamians. My government will establish in law a downtown management authority to oversee the continued revitalization of downtown Nassau. My government will implement the Family Island Airport Renaissance Project in, in, to accelerate the redevelopment of airports throughout the Bahamas. In its role as employer, my government will continue to implement measures to improve the working life of public service employees. Building on the progress already made in achieving an historic number of union agreements, my government will implement the first public service-wide promotion exercise in nine years. Amendments to existing legislation will be proposed to prevent the current long-standing backlog of overdue promotions and reclassifications happening again. A public reform bill, a public service reform bill will also be introduced to modernize the approach and governance of public servants. Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, my government is unshakable in its belief that education offers the best path to personal security, success, and happiness. Although we are making progress, my government is still battling with the many setbacks in education in recent years. The loss in learning for thousands of our young people, the lack of support for teachers and staff, the neglect of school buildings and material have taken a toll. Emblematic of the new approach which my government is taking is the National School Breakfast Program for which a pilot scheme was launched two days ago. 
While the program has obvious nutritional benefits, researchers and teachers know that a child who starts the day with a healthy breakfast is more likely to attend school more likely to participate in the classroom, and more likely to be a better learner. To encourage education and opportunities in the blue economy, my government will introduce a national maritime instruction and training bill to better support training in the workplace. My government will also present a national apprenticeship bill. And my government reaffirms its commitment to a pioneering, creative, and performing arts school for which early preparation has begun and material being prepared for public consultation. In its ongoing support for the growth and development of the young people of our nation, my government will introduce a National Youth Commission Bill. This body will be mandated to implement policies, programs, and projects consistent with the National Youth Policy to help support young people in developing their potential. Building on the success of the National Youth Guard, my government will introduce a national service bill that will invite our young citizens to register for national service. The participants in this program will serve to meet the needs of our vulnerable communities throughout the Bahamas. Reliable access to affordable health care is still out of reach for too many Bahamians. Notwithstanding its achievement in rescuing the health care system from their collapse, my government continues to build on lessons learned from COVID-19 pandemic to bolster our public health preparedness and health care delivery systems. My government continues to make investments to improve the health care infrastructure in New Providence, Grand Bahama, and throughout all the family of islands. This will include the introduction of a new telemedicine platform. My government will build a new specialty hospital in New Providence and will complete the construction of the new hospital in Grand Bahama. My government prioritizes public health, mental health and awareness initiatives, and is moving aggressively to implement the second phase of national health insurance with the introduction of catastrophic health care cover. This will make health care more affordable to all. Bahamians. In order to address the global shortages of health care workers, my government will establish additional accredited medical programs and increase investment in health care training. My government will repeal and replace the current Stem Cell Act to tighten its regulatory framework. Legislation will be introduced for the health care and protection of older persons to provide for adequate care 
and attention for older generations of Bahamians on whose shoulders our country has been built. My government expresses its thanks and gratitude to healthcare professionals across the Alapelico who continue to serve the people of this nation. <laughs> Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, in promoting greater economic security for the Bahamian people and the country as a whole, my government's legislative agenda promotes growth and diversification in the economy. It introduces measures to combat the high and rising cost of living, boosts development in communities, throughout the family islands and in New Providence. Provides support for housing. Protects our natural resources. Reserves long-standing issues relating to land. And advances a range of initiative to develop the national infrastructure. My government will also introduce a number of bills to help grow and diversify our economy. In order to lay the strategic foundation for the future, my government will introduce the Bahamas National Development Plan Bill. By putting the National Development Plan on a statutory footing, my government seeks to ensure that the next 50 years of our national life will have a fine strategic underpinning and focus. My government will introduce economic empowerment zone legislation. This will set out a range of initiatives and concessions to support specific industries and specify geographic areas. Intellectual proper property legislation will be introduced to protect the country's creative industries and empower our orange economy. This legislation will unlock paths to job and wealth creation. New opportunities will be created by legislation regulating cannabis and hemp. Several rounds of public consultation have already been completed. And my government notes the widespread enthusiasm amongst the public for this new health and economic sector. My government will propose legislation to introduce a yacht registry. A new legal profession amendment bill will be advanced that will establish a modern approach to the oversight of the legal profession. My government remains committed to development and innovation in the financial services industry. It is committed to compliance with international best practice while being innovative in new product and service development. A new securities industry bill will be presented 
that will ensure that our financial services industry and its regulation maintain the highest level of regulatory integrity. integrity, which will ensure that our country continues to lead from the front and in the digital assets industry. Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, survey results from 2020 confirm what we all know, that the Bahamas remain one of the top 10 most expensive countries in the world. The high cost of living is a major cause of financial stress and the psychological distress in the country. In a number of sectors, poorer people pay disproportionately higher costs than the wealthier section of society. My government does not wish to overburden any sector of the community, but we do wish to make our economy fairer. In order to provide a better framework for businesses and consumers, my government will introduce the following measures. A new registrar general bill to reorganize the options of the registrar's general office. This will help to ease the burden of doing business in the Bahamas. My government will launch a new online company registry portal, which will help to make the process of registration more efficient. My government will also launch a new online civil platform to provide efficient, transparent services to Bahamians. My government is also mindful of the need to provide for greater protection of consumers and will therefore introduce consumer protection legislation. As the cost of energy is a sufficient drive driver of the high and branch review of the energy sector and has recently established a Ministry of Energy to implement effective long-standing solutions. My government has already launched programs to install 100 megawatts of solar energy in Nassau and now blended power facilities incorporating a minimum of 50% solar generate, generation in 16 locations throughout the family islands. The introduction of renewable energy is a fundamental component of our promise to drive down the cost of electricity. 
My government remains especially committed to implementing clean energy in New Providence by moving to sources of renewable energy and becoming less dependent on fossil fuels. Building on these new efforts, my government will therefore introduce the following legislation. A new renew renewable energy bill that will provide a legislative and regulatory framework for the expansion of renewable energy generation. A new liquid natural gas bill that will provide a legislative and regulatory framework for development of LNG generation, which will provide and produce lower carbon emissions from the current system, along with the regulation of bunkering and blending LNG facilities in the Bahamas. A national development food security plan is being created. The objective of the plan is to achieve a comprehensive framework for food and agricultural development to promote investment, job creation, and environmental sustainability. My government will continue to build on the success of programs such as the Golden Yoke Program to provide greater economic security for Bahamians in retirement and in times of need. My government will introduce a bill to amend the National Insurance Act and regulations and the National Insurance Chronic Diseases Prescription Drug Fund Act. My government will implement a new local government bill that will enhance the operations and responsibilities of local government throughout our family of islands. The government will also take local government concepts to our children. And so it will re-implement a junior local government council throughout the family islands. Frequently, it is our family islands that experience the brunt of the climate crisis, requiring continued rebuilding and infrastructure investment. My government will launch the Family Island Infrastructure Fund to encourage public-private partnerships and economic opportunities for Bahamians. To secure the economic and social sustainability of our various communities, my government will introduce a number of measures to strengthen social support. My government will present a new Urban Renewal Authority Bill, which will provide for the establishment of an Urban Renewal Authority to improve the quality of life for residents in designated communities throughout the Bahamas. We will provide free access to the internet in low-income communities. This will help to ensure that every student in school can access the internet so that no child is left behind because of their economic or social circumstances. 
my government will restructure the monthly assistance program for seniors or other eligible persons that can be used to cover the cost of food, electricity, or water. My government will fulfill its promise and increase benefits for persons with disabilities. My government will also provide the much needed post school age facility for persons with disabilities. Every Bahamian's quality of life should be enhanced by legislation which will be put forward to ensure public access and right of way to beaches by requiring at least one public access to every beach. Dignity and respect should also come at the end of life. And so my government will also introduce a funeral industry service bill to bring about a regulatory framework for the funeral home industry. My government considers housing to be a basic right of all Bahamian citizens and is committed to implementing robust programs and policies to expand opportunities for home ownership. My government is moving to aggressively complete the plan construction of 180 affordable homes and will provide additional new housing throughout the country. My government is acutely aware of the challenges climate change places on our built environment. Hundreds of critically needed homes on Abaco and Grand Bahama have not been rebuilt or remain significantly damaged since the passage of Hurricane Dorian. My government will exhilarate the construction of new and affordable homes on Abaco and Grand Bahama. My government will create a sustainable rent to own housing initiative to create an additional pathway to home ownership for Bahamians, those Bahamians who are facing financial barriers. Our land, seas, and all natural resources are a part of patrimony and birthright of all Bahamians. A national forest bill will be presented to ensure that our green economy in general and our forests in particular are given the necessary regulatory framework to support environmental sustainability. My government will propose legislation to regulate mining to provide a proper framework to prevent the unlawful exploitation of our natural resources. This will also provide a defined royalty framework so that it is Bahamians who benefit. The Bahamas Wildlife Enforcement Network Bill proposes to establish an armed law enforcement agency dedicated to enforcing all laws with regard to our nation's natural resources. One long-standing issue that our government will address in the upcoming legislative session is the security of property ownership. My government will do 
what many previous administrations have promised. It will enact appropriate legislation to deal with land registration and the adjudication of disputes. In this context, the government will amend the Environmental Planning and Protection Act to provide for a streamlined application of the environmental laws to Bahamian-owned small developments. Regulations will also be introduced under the Environmental Planning and Protection Act to allow for spot fines to be administered for violation of the act that will result in environmental damage. Madam President and Honorable Senators, Madam Speaker and members of the Honorable House of Assembly, in strengthening its focus on the country's national security, my government is concerned to ensure that our borders are well defended, disposed to have positive relations with our neighboring states in CARICOM, and all those with whom we enjoy friendly relations determined to regulate the flow of migrants into our country, to arrest and reduce the incidence of crime, and ensure the long-term sustainability of our territory by making us more resilient to the negative impacts of climate change. In respect of our Armed Forces Amendment will be proposed to the Defense Force Act and regulations. These modernizing measures will help to continue to preserve discipline and good order in the Defense Force. A Royal Bahamas Defense Force Cadets bill will also be proposed to allow the current Royal Bahamas Defense Force Rangers to become a legislated youth arm of the Royal Bahamas Defense Force. In respect to our relationships with other nations, my government will continue to ensure that our foreign policy objectives align and support our national priorities on climate change, food security, human rights and development, irregular migration, and other cross-border criminal activities. Our diplomacy will also focus on trade and investment, public health and disaster preparedness. My government is greatly affected by the high volume of irregular migrants who travel to our shores. While we understand the plight of these persons, they are seeking refuge for a better life. The Bahamas cannot sustain the overwhelming numbers of persons. We will, therefore, continue to protect our borders. My government will introduce a bill to amend the Immigration Act to make new provisions and to be more responsive to the present realities of our immigration circumstances.
regulations will be introduced to govern the procedures at the detention center to ensure that it is operating optimally and in conformity with international best practices. The incidence of crime and the fear of crime continues to blight the lives of many of our people. Therefore, my government will introduce a compendium of measures to underpin its strategies in prevention, detection, prosecution, punishment, and rehabilitation. Several reforms will be put forward during the current legislative session. These include a National Security Council Bill, a National Intelligence Bill, and the Conditional Release of Offenders Bill. Anti-gang legislation will be brought to Parliament that will provide for stiffer penalties and prison terms for numbers of and acts of criminal institutions and organizations. Amendments are proposed to the Firearm Act, which will require safety training for everyone licensed to possess a firearm. An amendment will be proposed to the Supreme Court Act to expand the number of Supreme Court justices by five in order to expedite and clear the backlog of cases. A new court services bill will empower the judiciary to operate autonomously by taking away oversight by central government. <laughs> thereby removing the bottleneck caused by the current system and providing further judicial independence. My government will introduce legislation to combat cybercrime. From time to time, other additional measures will be laid before you to support this ambitious agenda for change. My government understands that while we are, all of us, impatient for change, Real change takes time. And while that change is underway, we must be mindful to ensure that those who struggle most, those amongst us whose lives depend on the rest of us being good neighbors, that we stand up, step forward, and reach out in their times of need. And so, my government remains grateful for the support of and partnership with the Bahamian people and looks forward to continue, continuing that support to build on further progress and drive new change. Now that the country is headed in the right direction, Together, we can work ever more fervently to achieve the kind of big changes so long by the Bahamian people. I pray that the blessings of Almighty God rest upon your counsels as you strive to bring about a better day, a new day in the Bahamas. I thank you.
many people, a breast cancer diagnosis can feel like a battle they're facing alone. But we're all in this together because breast cancer patients are our mothers, sisters, daughters, our friends. Women need to be assured that they have access to the screening they need and the support they deserve because every woman matters. Every story is powerful. Every voice makes a difference. Join Guardian Media Group as we pink up the month of October for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Show your support. Place your ad. Give your story, your voice in the Nassau Guardian, Star 106 Hits, Guardian Radio, or Hot 91. For more information, contact your account executive or call 302-2300. Join Guardian Media as we motivate our community by supporting a powerful cause and raising awareness for Breast Cancer Awareness Month this October. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Want to reach your Grand Bahama customers? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Nassau Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. Beulah Gal, can you believe this? We are now the patrol queens of the neighborhood. We now large and in charge. So we need to check out what's going on in everybody's yard. What about that gun that we know that Junior and his homeboys just ran out? Can we report that too? Of course we can. But we could be in deep trouble if they find out. We need to report what we see, Beulah. When you call Crime Stoppers, they just answer your call in Miami. So then we can report everything? Guns? Where they hiding the drugs? Who shoot who? Who part of which gang? Or who disturbing the peace with the loud music and the motorcycles. Then our neighborhood will be the best in the Bahamas and everybody gonna want to come live here. And then our house price will go up, gal. So what we waiting on? What's the number? If you see something, say something. Let us all pitch in and stop the crime before it's your time. Call 328-8477 from Nassau or 242-300-8477 from the Family Islands. Or text us through the Crack Crime Bahamas app. Stop the crime before it's your time. Just sign in and have a seat, please. They'll call you in for your x-ray shortly. That's why they call it a waiting room. You won't have that problem at 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Grover. We never schedule multiple appointments, so you'll be in and out in no time. And if your initial screening reveals a concern, our radiologist can conduct an alternative screening right then and there. Call 328-8157 to schedule an appointment at 4th Terrace Diagnostic Center or Imaging at Grosvenor today. <laughs> 